I've stayed in every single Disney World hotel, and now I'm telling you exactly what to avoid when you're planning your trip. A stay in a Disney hotel can be pretty darn magical, but it can also come with its pitfalls and even its dangers. From overspending on rooms, to having the wrong expectations, to actual real life dangers, I'm gonna tell you what to avoid that could be a bummer on your vacation. And there's some pretty wild ones on here many of which I've experienced myself. And those were trying times for me and I don't want that to happen to you, so I'm gonna help. Before we dive in, if you are curious about any of the Disney World Resort hotels, I have ranked every single one in a video on the channel that you can check out right now so you can figure out which one might be right for you. And know if any of the pitfalls we're about to talk about might apply to the hotel you're interested in. But let's get started. First up, missing amenities. The Disney premium doesn't always mean premium options. In this category, we're gonna discuss missing room service. Yeah, typically when you're paying several hundred dollars a night, you expect that your hotel has a room service option. Maybe not at every single Disney World Resort hotel, but at the deluxe options where you're spending sometimes close to $8,000 a night, you might expect room service. This, unfortunately, is not an expectation that will always be fulfilled. Now, prior to the pandemic, room service was offered at deluxe hotels and deluxe villas, and even offered at the moderate resort, Coronado Springs Resort. If you haven't stayed in those hotels since then, you'll probably be expecting room service, but I have some bad news. It's not there. The only hotel that Disney owns in Disney World that offers room service is Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, AKA, Disney's most expensive hotel. Even since the pandemic, you may have seen some spots like Disney's Yacht and Beach Club resorts bring back room service, but those have since done away with it too. I hate this. I think it's the worst. When I'm spending so much on a luxury level hotel, which Disney is a luxury destination in many cases because of those prices, I want room service. I want to be able to order oatmeal in the morning or even just a continental fruit breakfast kind of situation. I, I want to be able to order like pizza, anything really. And it is just one of those perks that has kind of disappeared over the years that room service is really now only available at Grand Floridian. So let's talk about how to avoid this major pitfall. If room service is a must for you, you might be looking at a higher splurge than you originally expected, or you can consider booking a non-Disney hotel. Many good neighbor hotels do offer room service, including ones that have much cheaper rates than the Disney World hotels. And you can even find room service with a great location at the Marriott-owned Swan and Dolphin, which is in the Epcot Resort area. You can walk to Epcot and get room service. And Disney hotels literally cannot give you both. <laughs> I guess you could walk to Epcot from Grand Floridian, but it would take you a while. How long would that take you? Mm -hmm. Google Maps. Directions. Walking. There's not even a walking route. You can't walk. You cannot walk to the Grand Floridian to Epcot. It would take you 26 minutes to bike. <laughs> Another missing amenity is dining either early in the morning or very late at night. Something else that has really gone away since the pandemic are those long hours at resort restaurants. The earliest you will see any dining open is 6 a.m. and that is pretty much limited to contemporary grounds at Disney's Contemporary Resort and Gasparilla Island Grill at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. Most other locations open at 6.30 or 7 at the earliest. Typically, value resorts are going to tend towards the earlier side of that spectrum. So luckily you get to eat a little earlier if you're staying in those value hotels, I guess. Now this is especially a problem because Disney's Animal Kingdom and Magic Kingdom can often open at 8 a.m., which means resort guests are getting in with an early entry at 7.30 a.m. We tend to recommend leaving an hour before you wanna get somewhere to get from point A to point B in Disney World, which means you're leaving at 6.30 a.m. when most breakfast options aren't even open yet. It certainly doesn't leave a lot of time for breakfast if it leaves any at all. Not to mention the folks that might need that cup of coffee before 6 a.m. because they're early risers. Parents, I hear ya, you're seen. Disney may not wanna give you coffee, but I do. I wish you had coffee. And the situation is even worse at night. Most hotel quick service options close at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. Some spots have a very limited grab and go menu available for another hour. So the latest you'll see things open is about midnight. And that's typically with a limited menu. If you're arriving to your hotel from late travel or even getting back from the parks, which often stay open that late, you won't really have any food options to speak of. That leaves you with only the options of ordering something which can get pricey. I don't wanna pay for food delivery, I do, but I don't want to. 
And I do it because I'm lazy, not out of necessity. I definitely don't want to do it out of necessity. And then it's a hassle. I just want to stop by a quick service on the way back to my room to grab something to eat. I don't want to have to order food and meet the delivery person in the lobby. That's, it's a whole thing. How to avoid this. If you expect to need to eat at very early or very late times, make sure you have some supplies in your room. You can do this with grocery delivery, which we will talk a little bit about later, but there are some great options, especially with our friends over at Kroger. You also can plan to eat early or late in the theme parks. While the theme parks are open, there are food options open. So before you head out of the theme park, maybe make sure there's a little bit of time to eat if you're getting hungry. This amenity isn't missing, and in fact, it's a pretty spectacular amenity, but it does have a major pitfall I want to talk about and that is transportation. The pitfall being transportation lines. No matter how expensive the hotel, you could be struck by the dreaded transportation lines. Disney World hotels come with the very nice perk of free transportation to anywhere you want to get around the Disney World Resort. But when it comes to peak transportation times, you could end up in some serious crowds and some serious lines. The worst times for this are going to be around park open and park close. The monorail will have the longest lines at peak times like park open and park close. And when that happens, you might be in a long line waiting for multiple monorails. You also might end up standing in the cars because the monorail is full. I have found this to be an especially big problem on nights that Magic Kingdom has an after hours party or extended evening hours. It just means a lot of people are going to and from Magic Kingdom at the same time and it becomes a major hassle. I was told there was a 45 minute wait for the monorail at Disney's Contemporary Resort and I ended up considering taking a ride share back to my car that was so long. The Skyliner tends to see its longest lines in the morning, but it can get crowded at those peak times. When this does happen, cast members will likely put you in a gondola with another group, whereas at slower times, you might get one to yourself. Buses get very long lines, especially for larger Disney World resorts like the Value Resort Hotels. I have waited over 90 minutes just to bus back to my hotel from Magic Kingdom before, and I'll tell you, there is nothing worse than waiting a long time for your bus when you have been in the theme park for 15 plus hours and you just want to get off your feet. Plus, they pack the buses very full during those busy times, which can be a little uncomfortable. Now, there are a few things you can do about this. Of course, I do recommend using Disney's free transportation. It is one of the best perks about staying at any Disney World Resort hotel, including the cheaper ones. My first recommendation is when you have the option, take a boat. Many of the hotels have options to boat to certain locations, and if you have a boat as an option, I do recommend it. Also, if you're headed from the Magic Kingdom parking lot, you can take the ferry boat across the Magic Kingdom instead of taking the monorail. This is certainly an interesting tip because you might be thinking, whoa, boats are slow, Quincy. Everybody knows that. And that's only kind of true, okay? First of all, I really like boats. Second of all, boats aren't that slow. The boat between the Transportation and Ticket Center and Magic Kingdom actually takes exactly the same amount of time from loading to unloading to get between Magic Kingdom and the parking lot as the monorail does. The only trick is it takes a little bit longer to load and unload the boat. But because a lot of people think the boats are slow, people tend to opt to go for other modes of transportation. And in many cases, like the ferry boat, the boats have a much higher capacity than something like the monorail. So they can load a lot more people, meaning you're more likely to get on the next boat instead of having to wait through a boat for the next one to come. Anyway, I will always say take the ferry. I'll say it every time. I'll say it with my chest. Take the ferry. You know, I'm sweating. It's hot in here and I'm in a sweatshirt, but I just think the vibe is right. Also in um, a video I did recently on the channel, I wore a nice shirt and then I realized that you could see my sweatpants. And the whole time I just was kidding myself. So, you know, it's just important to me that I live my truth by wearing a sweatshirt. I hope you're living your truth too. I hope you're in a sweatshirt. Another way to avoid is to travel early or late. If you travel early before you're trying to get somewhere, you could see a lot lower lines. For instance, we were trying to get from the Magic Kingdom parking lot to Magic Kingdom about an hour before the park opened for rope drop a few weeks ago. And that was one of the busiest weeks of the entire year. There was almost not a soul in sight on the ferry, on the monorail. It was so easy for us to get from point A to point B. So I very much recommend going really early. It can't hurt. They even let you in the park typically about 30 minutes prior to the park opening to resort guests. And you can start maybe looking at shops or grab a coffee, just hang out in the ambiance and get set for a big day. 
And if you want to arrive late, that's an option too. If that rope drop time isn't super important to you or you wanna sleep in or you have a breakfast reservation, going to the park an hour plus after the park is opened means you'll probably have a much easier time getting around on transportation. This works at the end of the day too. Maybe hang out in the park a little bit, dilly dally, grab yourself some ice cream at Plaza Ice Cream Parlor if you're in Magic Kingdom. It actually stays open past park clothes and that could mean shorter lines when you do leave the park or leave early. You know, sometimes kiddos gotta sleep. They don't make it past fireworks. I get it. Sometimes I don't make it past fireworks. A final way to avoid this is to take an Uber. If you are traveling at peak times, it might be worth it to you to spend a little bit of money to Uber from point A to point B. Now Ubers can get a little pricier at these times, but the drives are typically under 10 minutes around Disney World, so it's usually not too bad. I would say expect 10 to $15 ish. So if you're in a hurry, it's it's really, really crowded and you just can't handle it, consider taking an Uber or a Lyft. Lyft actually has a partnership with Disney, so I often find cheaper rates on Lyft than Uber when I'm in Disney World. But yeah, amenities. You think they're good. You think they're amenable, but they're bad sometimes. I don't know that I'd stick with that one. I don't know that I stand by what I just said because I think it was kind of cheesy, but I think I like it. Our next section is going to be wildlife. You're still in Florida, baby. Disney World can feel like a separate world, but that doesn't mean that you are not still in one of the wildest states for wildlife. I'm trying to think of what's wilder. Texas might be wilder, Alaska, wilder. Things with, no, we have bears, but grizzlies are scary. We don't have grizzlies. Anyway, you gotta be careful about wildlife. For instance, it is not super fun to think about snakes and alligators being around you when you're trying to have a nice vacation, but the reality is there are probably snakes and alligators around you. Personally, I have seen alligators two times in and around Magic Kingdom. I have seen one swimming but as I was on the Liberty Bell Riverboat, and I've seen one sitting in a little bit of a retention pond right outside the park. You'll also see signage for snakes and alligators pretty much anytime you're near a wild section of water. There are signs almost everywhere telling you to avoid snakes and gators. And this is a bit of a silly one, but there was even a bear in Magic Kingdom. A bear that they had to shut down a large portion of the park for and ended up having to basically corral in a ride scene. The bear was hanging out on the banks of the Rivers of America, which means it was hanging out with some of the animatronics that you can see when you're on the Liberty Bell Riverboat. Now, places where Disney is maintaining the landscaping are probably going to be fine, but pay attention to any signage that warns against wildlife. And definitely, definitely, definitely keep an eye on little ones. Disney World is home to an 11,500 acre wildlife reserve, so those animals are around. If you do see a critter, steer clear. I've always heard the thumb rule. If you can hold your thumb out in front of you and your thumb is not blocking that animal, you are too close for it to be safe. If you see a critter and you're somewhere that has a lot of guest traffic, make sure to let a cast member know. That way they can make sure that the animals and the creatures are safe. The animals and the creatures. My only concern is animals. <laughs> that way the cast member can make sure that the animals and other guests are safe. And hey, if you wanna safely see animals, just head over to Animal Kingdom. They've got a ton there. You can even pet them. Go over there. Another danger, bees. Specifically me. Listen, I'm afraid of bees. I understand that I'm not allergic to bees and if a bee stings me, it'll just hurt and nothing bad will happen. I don't wanna be stung. I've been stung like 10 times by bees and I've been scared of them since I was a little kid. I've been stung by a wasp. I just don't like bees. And bees are a very real danger in Disney World. Now Disney uses a lot of natural tricks to try to limit bugs, basically a lot of the plant life they use, but you'll still see bees pop up. In fact, I've seen bees close Joffrey's booths and festival booths in Epcot. And I have even had bees in my hotel room, not one, but two times. If I had a nickel for every time a bee was in my hotel room, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. I think that's a Dr. Doofenshmirtz quote from Perry the Platypus. That's not what that show was called. Phineas and Ferb. When I had the bee in my hotel room um, at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, it was very aggravated and was like flying around very quickly. And again, I'm scared of bees, so I had to lock myself in the bathroom. And if there's a bee in your hotel room, you can call the front desk, which I did, and they had to send out Disney's pest control. But pest control wasn't on site at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, so they didn't make it there for about two hours. I did end up facing my fears and getting to be out of my hotel room with a wildlife conservation book um, and an elaborate, what I would call dance to usher it out of the door. If you do ever have a spooky bug in your hotel room, you can call the front desk. They will send pest control to come check it out, but just keep in mind, 
it does take a while because they are not necessarily around your hotel. Now, otherwise, if you aren't allergic, most bees are harmless, just the sting, but you still might be afraid of them like me. You can always opt for indoor dining and especially stay away from sugary foods when you're outside. Bees are also the biggest problem in the spring and summer. If you have exterior doors in your hotel room, make sure to keep them closed. This will one, keep little critters out from your hotel room and it also helps to conserve energy. Also, if you do have an allergy, come prepared. Whether that means bringing an EpiPen or just some allergy medication, make sure that you have everything you need to keep yourself safe in Disney World. Accidents and disasters can happen. Let's talk about some surprising changes. Nostalgia? No more. Room and hotel re-themes happen all the time in Disney World, and it might not be all that important for first timers who are coming to Disney World, but if you've been around Disney World, you have your favorite hotel and you expect something from it, it might not be what you remember from the last time you came. For instance, I was always very in love with Disney's Contemporary Resort as a child, and I think we only ever got to stay there once. I really liked the rooms, I really liked the hotel in general. Now, if you stay at Disney's Contemporary Resort, the rooms are Incredibles themed, which is not what I remember, it's not what I have nostalgia about, and honestly, it was a bit of a bummer when I saw how the rooms had changed in person for the first time. Though these rooms are cool, it's just not what I personally knew and loved about the contemporary, and I know I'm not the only one that has this kind of relationship to Disney World hotels. Now, room themes are exciting and often much needed. Just look at the rooms at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort, which have gone from, in my opinion, relatively outdated and not worth the price, to very beautiful Mary Poppins inspired re-themes. But even when the re-themes are really good, they do remove a little bit of the feel of these hotels. My dad loved the dark 1970s vibe of the Polynesian tiki themed rooms, and now most of those rooms have Moana in them, which is awesome for kiddos, but not so great for my dad who doesn't really care about Moana, as you might guess. Now, this one's a pretty easy one to avoid, and it's just by doing your research. I have done a tour of every single Disney World Resort hotel on our channel in the last three years, and you can go check those out. I always mention if there has been a retheme or has a retheme coming up. Also, we have pages on every single hotel over on altears.net, and you can go check those out for all the information you might need about what the themes look like now. We have full pages on all those hotels, and we post articles whenever there's any news, like construction or a new refurbishment. Speaking of construction, this can be a major downer when you're staying at a Disney World Resort hotel. Disney World is kind of constantly under construction. It's sort of their shtick. They keep moving forward, like Walt said. And that's awesome because it means things stay updated and fresh and in working order, but construction can be a little bit of a bummer when you're staying in a hotel. Sometimes things like certain pools or common areas might be closed. You could even see something like a restaurant closing for refurbishment. So if you're planning a stay, make sure you check out the hotels page on the Disney website. The main page will have red text right at the top that tells you if there's any construction or refurbishment coming on that could be a disruption to your stay. That way you don't take your pool loving kiddo to a hotel where the main pool is going to be closed while you're there. Now make sure to check back because obviously Disney announces construction all the time and it's possible that they can announce construction on the hotel you booked after you booked. If there's ever a point where you're no longer happy with a booking you've already made, you can modify it. You can modify it relatively easy on the My Plans section of the Disney website. And if there's ever not an option for exactly what you want, give Disney a call and they will be happy to help you make sure you have the most magical vacation you can. Now to keep an eye on those construction updates, you can for sure keep checking that hotel page on the Disney website, but you can also follow All Ears Net on social media. We always post whenever there's going to be a major construction of any kind at any of the hotels. You can see it on social media or on our blog just by searching the hotel's name. Our next section is unexpected visitors, AKA your door is always open. So this one's a bit of a surprise, but Disney hotels do have something that they call daily checks. Disney World does have a policy where they do institute daily checks on the hotel rooms. Now, typically this happens when housekeeping comes, but if you decline housekeeping, someone will still come check in on your room. This is for the safety of you and other guests, just to keep an eye on things, but it certainly can be a little uncomfortable. Now, it's not out of the scope of how a lot of hotels behave, but it's something that has caught a lot of our readers off guard. It can certainly interrupt a nap or come as an unwelcome surprise if you have a stranger entering your room all of a sudden. They'll knock and they really will only be in there for a second just to make sure everything is okay, but it can be a little bit of a nuisance. Unfortunately, there's no real way to avoid this one. This is going to happen. The big thing you can avoid is a nasty surprise by being aware that it does happen. So that's what I'm doing. 
helping you out by letting you know to expect it. It's certainly something to be aware of if you plan to be in your room in the middle of the day. Now, another way that you might not be quite as private as you expect is that people can see in your windows. Of course, this is an issue no matter what hotel you're staying in, but it's something to be aware of when you're staying in Disney World. Unless you have a room that faces kind of a wilder area, people in the hotel are going to be able to look into your room and see you. I think it's really easy when you're in a hotel to feel like you're in a private space, but you're really not. Many Disney hotel rooms open up to very public areas, sometimes pool areas, and people do, you know, their eyes wander, they look in hotel rooms, so just make sure that you are protecting your privacy. The way to avoid people looking into your hotel room is to use the curtains. Every single Disney World hotel room has privacy curtains and blackout curtains. If you use those privacy curtains, people can still kind of see, but it's gonna do a really good job of keeping your room private while still letting a lot of light in. Whereas with the blackout curtains, completely no one's seen in there, it's like a wall. If you're curious about what the curtains will look like in the hotel room you're staying at, you can check out my room tours because every single one does go over the curtains because um, I like to look at the designs. The blackout curtain is also great for naps, so just pulling that closed means it's like it's nighttime, even in the middle of the day. Our next section is great expectations. Not every hotel is built the same. One example of this is that there is no indoor quick service at Disney's Old Key West Resort. Now, this is a very popular resort. It is a Disney Vacation Club resort. That's Disney's timeshare program. And it's pretty cool because it's got really large rooms that you can get for pretty cheap if you use or rent Disney Vacation Club points. The food at this hotel is also pretty good at Old Key West, especially Olivia's Cafe, which is a huge favorite with many of our readers and maybe even worth going out of the way for. I ate there during my resort tour, which you can see in the video on the channel right now. Now, the quick service at this hotel is called Goods Food To Go, and it is located in a covered outdoor space. Most of the time, that's gonna be fine, but it can be a big bummer when you're just trying to grab a quick meal and you're in a super crowded area because everyone's hiding from the rain. That's the kind of thing to keep in mind when you're looking at these hotels. Avoiding the rain in general is a pretty important part of coming to Florida. It rains almost every day for about half the year, and that can mean really bad thunderstorms too. The best way to avoid this is to check out what the indoor and outdoor sections of your hotel look like on a resort map before you book. Some hotels have mostly indoor areas, Wilderness Lodge, Contemporary Resort, uh, even if you stay in the main tower of Coronado Springs. But if you are staying in a hotel that has a lot of outdoor uncovered pathways, then you might end up getting caught in the rain more than you'd like during your Disney trip. We also have to talk about storage space. I think I am gonna turn on the light, but it's so ugly. Ugh, I'm so sorry I've done this to you. I, it's just getting dark and I just keep talking about hotels. My apologies to you, the viewer, for having to view this yellow light. Um, you also might run into an issue with storage space, particularly if you're traveling with more than two adults. Now, it is very important that you consider storage space in your hotel room as without an adequate amount, you could end up with an uncomfortable lack of space. Now, the refurbished Disney World hotel rooms do a lot of work when it comes to bringing good amounts of storage space to the rooms. The beds have a lot of under bed space. There's often kind of hidden nooks and crannies in these rooms where you can keep your luggage during the day. And some of the room options even have Murphy beds, which pull down from the wall and give you even a seating area during the day when the bed is up. The value hotels are especially an issue for this because they are on the smaller side. So you might see smaller bathrooms or not enough room for bags at these hotels. If you're curious about storage space, you're a heavy packer or you're bringing more supplies than usual, you can see the storage space outlined in my hotel videos. How many times do you think I'm going to shameless plug during this video? I think I can get through a few more. Are we keeping a tally? Maybe we should start. The more expensive the hotel, the bigger room is going to be in general. So if you know that you need a little bit more space, you might need to splurge a little bit more budget, a little more for your hotel. I ate a lot of tuna fish earlier today because I did, I just, I'm in a tuna phase, meaning like a lot of tuna salad, which is a weird phase to be in. What, is, what section is this? Another danger about expectations is that room requests are not guaranteed. Now, if you want something particular in your room or about the location of your room, you can submit a room request to Disney. You can do this when you check in in the app. You can do this when you book the hotel online. And typically room requests give you opportunities to request handicap accessible rooms or um, you can even request certain locations in some instances. And if the sort of pre-chosen requests that you can pick online aren't doing it for you, you can also call Disney and put in any room request you want. 
One time I was staying at Disney's Wilderness Lodge and only some of the rooms had been refurbished and I really wanted a refurbished room. So I called Disney and I asked if that request could be put on my reservation and sure enough, I got put in a refurbished room. I definitely recommend putting in room requests if you have a specific space requirement. So if there's a certain type of room that you want at the hotel, if there's a certain location of the room, I recommend putting a room request. Disney will do their best to honor it. But did you catch what I just said there? They will do their best. Room requests are just that, requests. And Disney will do their best to honor them, but that doesn't guarantee that they will. If it's a crowded time and they don't have a certain room to be able to give you, or if the room that would satisfy what you're asking for isn't in your price category, then Disney may not be able to honor that request. This is just something to keep in mind is that it's not guaranteed it shouldn't be treated as such. It's not a cast member's fault if you don't get your room request. They will absolutely do their best to make sure you're happy at your hotel, but room requests aren't guaranteed. Also, let's talk about bathrooms again. I brought it up briefly, but bathroom and sink count is very important. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have the right expectations of what your bathroom layout is going to look like. Another thing that my hotel tours can help you with because I'm very thorough, so thorough that I think our editor sometimes is like, why is she talking about the light switches? and it's because the people need to know. I am bringing the people what they need to know. And one of those things is how many sinks there are. So a lot of, most Disney hotels are going to have two separate bathroom spaces. There's going to be a room with a toilet and a shower that is closed off from a room with a vanity and a sink. Usually there is one sink with a good amount of vanity space, but this isn't always the case. Vanity space absolutely does vary and multiple sinks are available in some Disney World hotel rooms. So it's important to know that you are getting what you expect. If you're staying at Disney's Art of Animation, for instance, you might expect that you're getting two full bathrooms. And if you're in one of the family suites, that's true. But if you're staying in the Little Mermaid rooms, you'll have a standard bathroom. So if you're expecting more than one bathroom or even more than one sink, you might be disappointed. Of course, you can consider what this means for your travel party. A family of four, two adults, two kids might be okay with just one sink, but if you've got a larger travel party, then two sinks might be necessary, and so might a bigger room. So just make sure you know what to expect when it comes to the bathroom amenities so that you're not caught off guard, especially if you have any specific needs that you need out of your bathroom space. Our next section is an inconvenient location. So many steps. I've taken a lot of steps in Disney World. Literally, I've probably taken hundreds of thousands, if not like a million steps in Disney World. I do days in Disney World that are 25,000 steps pretty regularly, so it's gotta be up there. And some of those days are because I'm staying in a hotel room where the room is so, so far from the lobby. Some Disney hotels are very large and that can mean walks of a pretty long distance to and from the lobby. Perhaps the biggest offenders of this are Coronado Springs and Caribbean Beach and Saratoga Springs and Old Key West. Those are the four that on the top of my mind are like the most sprawling. I stayed in a room at Caribbean Beach that was a full 15 minute walk from the lobby. And at some of these hotels, it's not even worth trying to walk. You should instead wait for the internal shuttle that will pick you up at your closest bus stop. Yeah. Now this one is luckily pretty easy to avoid when you're booking. Check out maps of the hotels and make sure there's not going to be any sort of issue with the distance the possible rooms are from the lobby. This is especially important if you have any mobility issues. At Caribbean Beach, you could even get stuck without an elevator. If it does look like the hotel you're booking has longer distances to some of the common areas, you might want to consider paying for a preferred room, rooms that are often a lot closer to the lobby or the pools, or putting in a room request to try to get a little bit closer to those common spaces. And of course, I mentioned bus stops. We have got to talk about internal bus loops. Now, these larger hotels also have the horrible, very scary internal bus loops. That's other people's opinions. I also hate internal bus loops, but I don't think they're scary. I am, I face my fear on that. And I have had to deal with them many times. But these are routes that the buses take that stop at multiple stops within the hotel. Now, this is great because it means that there will probably be a bus stop pretty close to where you're staying, your actual room. You don't have to go very far to get to the bus but it does add a lot of travel time on your trip to or from the theme parks because you have to stop at the other stops as well. Like I said earlier, we always recommend giving yourself an hour to get from point A to point B in Disney World, but these internal bus loops do sometimes add around 20 minutes to that time. It can certainly be a bit of a hassle if you're running late to rope drop in the morning or the buses are busy, or if you just wanna get back to go to sleep, which I understand. 
Now, in my experience, I don't think the internal bus loops are the end of the world. I don't mind booking a hotel where I have to stay on the bus a little bit longer, but if it's a deal breaker for you, do not book a hotel with an internal bus loop. Here is a list of hotels with internal bus loops and how many stops you'll find in them. And if you do stay at a hotel with an internal bus loop, make sure that you're allowing that hour or even a little more to get from point A to point B so you don't miss anything important. Now let's talk noise. I was gonna yell. Now let's talk noise. Is this a good transition? I've done it a couple of times now, so I hope so. Some hotels do have some noise issues. Now, I do tend to hear more complaints about this when people are talking about value hotels, but in my experience at the Disney hotels I've stayed in, most of them have around the same level of noise, and it's usually not often that disruptive, with a big exception. If you are in a room that is adjacent to the main pool at our hotel, there will be a lot of noise during the main hours of the day. These pools typically have music playing very loud. They often have recreation staff out doing resort activities with kiddos. Um, they have kiddos running around playing, having a great time. And all of those things can add up for a very, very noisy environment. Now, if you don't tend to be in your room in the middle of the day, this doesn't matter. But if you do, because you need a break for a nap or your baby needs a break for a nap, this could be a really big problem as that kind of noise could keep you up, could keep your baby up when you really just wanna be able to make it a little later in the day when you go back to the park. For this reason, you might want to make a request for a room that's a little bit further away from the main pool. Might mean a longer walk to the lobby, but it also means you'll get lower noise levels. You can also make a request for rooms that face out to gardens or the edge of the hotel property, and typically this will get you a quieter spot. Now don't worry, noise levels typically are not a problem at night unless there's some sort of extenuating circumstance because the pool activities do end at a certain time and the pools close late at night. Now the hotels where noise is the biggest problem are going to be the value hotels, specifically Disney's all-star resorts. There are three of these hotels, sports, music, and movies, and I love these hotels. I think they're awesome, and I think that they are actually a reasonable price, but noise can be a big issue. These hotels often host larger sports groups, so that can be really large groups of kids, tweens, teens, and one thing I know about kids, tweens, and teens is they're very loud. They're so loud. I was one once. Where did I get such volume? You know, gosh, they're loud. When they're in a gaggle, like a large group, they're like extra loud. So that's just something to be aware of is that those hotels do host larger groups. There's not really a way to avoid this as Disney doesn't post when a larger group is going to be there, but uh, expect that during the summer, during the spring, that you could run into a group like that. In my opinion, worth it to get the price, but uh, definitely just something to be aware of. We've also got to talk about confusing layouts. Some Disney World hotels have pretty confusing layouts. Now, when you check in at the front desk, they will give you a map, and there are maps posted around the hotel too, but that doesn't mean it's impossible to get lost. I am speaking from experience. I have gotten very lost at some Disney World hotels, despite the fact that I literally am a Disney World expert, and I have gotten so lost multiple times at Disney's Saratoga Springs Resort. Now, I don't have a great sense of direction, but oh my goodness, it is such a sprawling resort. There are so many walking paths, and the only place you can find maps are on the bus loops. I literally was wandering around the golf course at Saratoga Springs, and I didn't even know it because I could not figure out where I was. I don't know if this has ever happened to anybody else, but I have gotten very lost at Saratoga Springs. No, I do know it's happened to somebody else. I saw a comment. One of you got lost at Saratoga Springs, and you and I, are friends. We're all friends, but you and I have a special bond. The way to avoid this is to get a map from the front desk. You can do this when you check in, or if you check on on mobile, you can just stop by to grab a map. Having a map is just a good idea so that you don't end up lost and you know where all the dining and amenities and recreation availability is. I also recommend taking a picture of the map on your phone, whether it's a picture of the map they give you at the desk or the map online, or even one of the posted map signs, just take a picture of the map. That way if you're lost and you have your phone with you, you have the map with you. When in doubt, you can always stop a cast member or call guest services and they will be happy to help you get where you need to be going. I have had to do this. Now we're gonna cover some embarrassing tips or lack thereof, tips. So one thing that you might wanna keep in mind is you might need cash for Bell services. Make sure to have some cash on you if you plan to utilize Bell services or Valley parking. Though pretty much everything is taken care of when you book your Disney World Resort Hotel, from that perspective, you still might want a little bit of cash on you to tip the hardworking hotel cast members. 
I know it's always the worst when I realize I don't have cash on me and I have to run to the ATM, which they do have in the lobby, but it's just nice to have a little bit of cash on me just in case. Another kind of embarrassing tip, balcony locks. Figure them out. This one, maybe I'm the only person in the world who's ever had this problem, but I did accidentally lock myself on the balcony at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge Resort without my phone alone. And I was stuck out there. You can see me talk about it in the video where I toured that room. It did truly happen. I really thought I was gonna have to start shouting to the Savannah and hope that a giraffe heard me and told one of the cast members. Luckily, I figured it out. I was able to put a certain amount of pressure on the door and get back in. But that hotel in particular has two locks on the balcony door. A couple of the hotels do. And when I opened the door, the lock didn't engage right or disengage right. And it re-engaged when I closed the door and I, I truly was locked on the balcony. It was scary. This is obviously a pretty singular issue, but it did happen to me. So I just want you to be aware, keep an eye on the balcony locks, figure them out when you get there. Make sure that you don't miss one. Could happen to the best of us. Another danger. Paying cash for Disney Vacation Club rooms. Do not do this, please, please. I cannot stress enough that you need to avoid paying cash for these DVC rooms. Now again, DVC is Disney's timeshare program and members of the DVC use points to rent their rooms. Those rooms are available to guests who are not in the DVC for cash prices, but those cash prices tend to be inflated a little bit. So if you do wanna stay in one of these hotels, one of these rooms that are DVC only, then what you want to do instead is rent Disney Vacation Club points. When DVC members do not wanna use all their points, many of them will put their points up for rent where you can purchase the points at a certain rate and then use the points to book the room, often getting the rooms at a pretty steep discount. A great way to use this is with our friends at David's DVC Rentals. They are a DVC point rental company. You can head over there, see what options are available, and they'll be absolutely happy to help you get into often a much larger room for much cheaper than you might expect to pay. Using DVC points is literally always how my family stays in Disney World, even though we're not DVC. We have a family that's two parents, two adult kids, and having those larger rooms is often really important to make sure we have enough space. Next up, do not miss special offers. Avoid missing special offers at all costs. I cannot stress enough, again, I'm saying that a lot now, but you can save up to 30%, sometimes even more, on your Disney World hotel rooms just by keeping an eye on the Disney special offers page. Disney drops discounts all the time on the hotels, especially in the off season. And even if you've already booked, you can get these applied to your hotel room. The page on the Disney website is called Special Offers, Deals, and Discounts, and it lists all deals that are going on at a certain time, whether they are for certain groups of people, um, certain park tickets, or certain hotels, they list all of the deals. This should be your go-to spot when you're booking a Disney trip. Whether you are about to book or have already booked, keep an eye on that page to make sure there's not a special offer that applies to your trip. We also will always post on our social media at All Years Net about any new special offers that have popped up. So if you've already booked and you're following All Years Net, you might see a special offer that could save you literally thousands of dollars if you play your cards right. Now, if you ever have booked and you see that special offer pop up, you can modify on the Disney website and potentially modify into that special offer, or you can call Disney to see if you can get that special offer applied to your trip, and they will typically be able to help you. Just right now, there's an offer to save up to 20% on rooms at select hotels in early 2024. Pass holders can save up to 35% on rooms in early 2024. Florida residents up to 30%, and they even dropped a free dining deal for Disney Plus subscribers. It's pretty darn cool. Just just make sure you're checking special offers before and after you book. All about saving you money. We want that money saved, so make sure you're checking. And our final point, the Disney premium. This is a major danger. Major danger? <laughs> this is a major danger. Speaking of thousands of dollars, we have to talk about the Disney premium. This is something you certainly want to avoid if you can, and if you're staying at a Disney World hotel, you're already not avoiding it completely. Things in Disney World just tend to be expensive because of that Disney magic just gonna be more expensive than staying off property or doing something off property. If you'd like to stay in an off property hotel, you should check out one of the good neighbors. Many of these are actually on property. They are just not owned by Disney and they often offer some of the same Disney perks. I've stayed at the Drury Inn, which you can see on our channel right now, and I had a really fantastic stay, so I think that would be a great option. 
But it's not just about where you book that means avoiding that Disney premium. It's also about avoiding paying Disney premium on certain items. Now gift shops do often offer breakfast items, essentials like sunscreen or medicine, um, and other things like that. It's one thing if you wanna buy Disney merchandise in a gift shop, but if you need those essentials, if you need some food, or if you're staying at a room with a full kitchen, you need groceries, then you really don't wanna be buying those at the Disney hotel. These items are typically going to be a lot more expensive than if you paid for them at just a standard store. Don't worry though, easy ways to fix this. If you are driving, just make sure to pack those things along with you and move them on into your hotel room when you arrive. But if you're flying or you're unable to pack your standard breakfast choice because maybe it's a yogurt and you don't wanna drive that in your car, I understand. What else would you not wanna drive in your car? Anchovies. So, you know, maybe you don't wanna put your anchovies in your car. Is that a breakfast item? I don't know, anyway. The point is, if you can't bring your groceries, then you do not have to go running to the gift shop to stock up your room on breakfast or late night items or even full on groceries for that full kitchen. Instead, you could head to a local store via rideshare, but rideshares tend to be a little expensive and it can be a serious hassle to grocery shop in an Uber. Instead, we recommend doing grocery delivery. Our friends over at Kroger are an amazing option for this. Ordering from Kroger offers the same great prices that you would see in store, including sales and coupons. And you'll see a lot more options than you would see in a Disney gift shop. Their trucks are refrigerated and they'll deliver right to your hotel where you can meet them and pick up the delivery. That way your home away from home is stocked with exactly what you want without having to rely on the gift shop or run an errand during your vacation. Plus no tipping saves you money. The drivers are Kroger employees and they do not take tips and their delivery fees are as low as $7, which is much less than a ride share to get you to a grocery store might be. Even better, you can get $15 off your first three orders with the link in the description below. And hopefully this helps. Now you know exactly what to avoid when you're booking your Disney World hotels. Remember, if you need help picking which hotel to stay in, go ahead and check out that ranking video. If you like this video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.